God, sorry, she just got out of a 30 hour alienated bidet surgery, so. Uh, what was the question? Flaunters. You know I take eight sugars in my cappuccino, okay? Not seven. I can tell by the weight. Oh, Blazy, right, of course, Dr. Blaze. Uh, yeah, we go way back. Uh, med school, obviously, law school, even a little stint there in drama school. Well, what do you wanna know? A plane just crashed into a cruise ship and they're airdropping the victims here any second, so I don't have all day. How would I describe him? Um, he arrogant, stubborn, um, poorly dressed, unconventional, maybe. Oh no, I only wear scrubs when I'm scrubbing into a surgery. That's how they got their name. Otherwise, it's a three-piece suit. Yeah, I honestly don't know what Dr. Winray, the best chief of surgery in this hospital. I don't know what she sees in him, you know. Me and Dr. Blaze? Well, no, we're colleagues, or friends, I guess you could say, but anything more than that. Uh, well, as chief of surgery, it'd be wildly inappropriate for me to want that. So, I don't. Oh, they're clearly in love with each other. It's true, he saved my life many times. Three times, four, I, I've been on death's doorstep. I've lost count, honestly. Well, I found her trapped in the basement. Couldn't get to her because all the elevators were blocked due to the avalanche in the hospital. Well, first there was the dorsal lobe transplant I performed on myself to save his sister. So I, uh, you know, crawled through the ductwork. Then there was a the double-edged William Sonoma. I had completely inoperable and uh, got there just in time. I had to basically kind of trick him into attempting that surgery and he came through. Well, yeah, but this is Mackenzie we're talking about. Dr. Winray, excuse me. It's true, Dr. Blaze really has been there for me. A lot. Every time I needed him, actually. I'd do anything for her, you know? You know, honestly, I'm not surprised he hasn't had the guts to tell her how he feels. What am I gonna tell her? <laughs> tell her what? what? What's there to tell? Dr. Blaze, we have a patient coding on Blu-ray. And are there Magna Carta levels within range? Uh, they're at 1992 AD. Okay, well have you tried unplugging them and plugging them back in? But then again, I have a new lawsuit to deal with every week because of him, so. Gotta think outside of the box, folks. Sinclair, I need you to do better, okay? This is trauma. You wanna follow protocol? Cartography's on the 10th floor. I guess we're even. Interns, you know? Oh God, I don't like that at all. The whole. Soldier Gone Rogue act is clearly a defense mechanism. I mean, he's afraid to be vulnerable. Goldenrod overcompensates for his lack of confidence with forced charisma. He doesn't feel like he's enough as a surgeon, so he had to make himself into a celebrity. Look, I get it, I'm just saying. I see right through it. I see right through him. There are thirst edits? What? Of Dr. Goldenrod and Blaze? Send it to me. Oh, <laughs> now that I have to see. I may not have any Tad Mallory's lining my shelves like you, Dr. Goldenrod. But if there's one place I thrive when there's a life on the line, it's outside of my element. <laughs> I can see that, Dr. Bruce. Okay, yeah, I can definitely see that. Oh, if you'll excuse me, this is in regards to my fourth Tad Mallory Award nomination, so I have to take this. Dr. Goldenrod is brilliant, but if they give that man one more award, he will be absolutely insufferable. Senator, how you doing? You hit a birdie yet? Oh, it looks like they need me to scrub in for one of the uh, plane victims, so. Uh, you're not gonna show any of this to the board, right? Is this, is this okay? Okay. Uh, okay. Hi, I'm Dr. Fonters. Uh, I'm a resident here, you may have you've probably seen me around a lot. Um, and this is my story. Flaunters, we got a subjugated reverb. I need you scrubbing in. Can you get me a quinoa burger, please? 